Teaching time to ESL learners. One of the most important things we will teach our students is how to tell the time and how to say they are doing something at a specific time. We have analog and digital clocks and students need to know how to tell the time. To tell the time, students need to know how to count and then you want to make sure that they can say the time in the correct way. Don't push too hard, make sure they understand the basics before moving too quickly. Just because something is basic and easy to us doesn't mean that the students will understand it and use it correctly. So as the teacher, you need to take it slow. You can show this to your students and ask them, what is this? It's a clock. What do you do with a clock? You count the time. We need to know the time because we need to go places. We need to know when something happens. Start by asking them the hour. What hour is this? It's one two, three, four, all the way to 12. There are two ways to count the time. You can say it's 1.30 or you can say it is half past one. I suggest you first start by teaching them the basic and easiest method before moving on to quarter past, half past, quarter to. Perhaps do that in a second lesson. But in this document I have for you, I do have worksheets to teach them half past, 20 past, 22, 5, 2. So start by asking your students the hour. What time is it? It is 1 o'clock. What time is it? 2 o'clock. Make sure to ask all your students some questions. What time is it? It's 3 o'clock. A mistake many students make is, let's say you start teaching them 3.30. They might say 3.30 o'clock. So tell them that you can only use o'clock if it's on the hour. You can also teach them about a.m. and p.m. Tell your students to first say the hour and then the minute. It is 1.36. It is 10.40. It is 5.10. Make sure that all the students get a chance to answer the time. Another difficulty they have is saying the zero. So tell them it is 12.00. It is 12.01. It is 12.02. It is 12.03. Once all the students have had a chance to practice the time, do this activity with them. In this activity, the students have to take the analog and write it in digital form. Go through some of the examples and then let the students do it. Afterwards, check that everyone got it right. You want to teach them about AM and PM. AM is in the morning. It starts at 12 AM and that is when it's dark and then it goes all the way around to 12 PM, which is the afternoon. You can also teach them noon and midnight. TPR time activity. Your left hand is the minute hand. Your right hand is the hour hand. What time is it? It is one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock. Let your students do this with you. What time is it? Nine o'clock. They have to practice doing it with you. Then add the minutes. It is one o'clock. It is one o five. 110, 115. Do this with your students until they are comfortable and then you just say out the numbers and they do it on their own. Let your students use their arms to show the time. Tell all the students to think of a time, they will call out a time and everybody else has to make that time with their arms. The next activity, ask students to write down a time on a slip of paper and close it. Then they have to line up and arrange themselves from earliest to latest. The students stand up, they say what their time is, and then they rearrange themselves. As a follow-up activity, ask them to say, what do they usually do at that time? You can give them some examples. At eight o'clock, I wake up. At nine o'clock, I come to school. At six o'clock, I eat dinner. Get the students to think of something they usually do at that time, so when you go through the line and ask each student their time, let them add something they do at that time. Next, do Garfield's daily routine worksheet. Do the first one with them. He gets up 
at seven o'clock. They can write down the number or they can write down the word. What does Garfield do at 7.05? He brushes his teeth. Remind your students that because he is only one, the verb gets an S or ES at the end. This is something very important for the students to practice because a lot of them will just say he brush his teeth. What does he do at 7.30? He goes to school at 7 30. So you've taught the students how to tell time. 1.20, 1.30. You've practiced it with them. Now, if you want to teach them the other way to tell time, is your chance. In the first half, you say past. And the second half, you say two. One o'clock, five past one. Ten past one. Quarter past one. Twenty past one. Twenty-five past one. Half past one. Because it's halfway. And now, we move to two. 25 to what is the next hour? Two. 25 to two. 20 to two. Quarter to two. 10 to two. Five to two. What I like to do is I write the times on the board. So 105, 210, 315, 420, 525. I write this down until 12 o'clock and then I ask each student to tell me what this time is using the method of saying past or to. This is a great way for all the students to practice and learn from each other. Here's another worksheet telling the time. It's quarter past seven. Which one is it? Quarter past seven. Here we go. It's 25 to 10. Do this activity with the students. Here they can draw it in. It's half past seven. It's 20 past five. They can write this down in sentences and they can also write in the analog clock. In the next worksheet, there is a story. The students can circle the times and then write down the digital version. Ask them about what is happening in these pictures and then write the order of the events according to their own lives, one to 13. For example, which one is first? I wake up, so that is number one. I take a shower, that is two. With time, you want to relate it to events in their lives so that they can understand it better. The best way to do that is with their schedules. Go through your own daily schedule. I wake up at 7 a.m. I drink coffee at 7.15. I take a shower at 7.30. Go through your own schedule to show your students how it's done and what grammar to use with the time. If it's something they usually do, they only use the basic form of the verb. If you talk about another person or one other thing, you will add an S. I brush my teeth at 7 a.m. He brushes his teeth at 7 a.m. Now ask your students to write down their own schedules. Once they're done, in pairs, they tell their partner their schedule. After that, their partner will tell their schedule to another pair. That way they get to practice talking about someone else. He wakes up at 8 a.m. He goes to school at 8.30. Next, we have a story. Read the story, circle the time, and underline their activities. Let the students read the story together. I usually give my students one or two sentences each so that everyone gets a chance to participate.